Eat stress-free this spring with Factors ready-to-eat meals. My family and I have tried them and they are delicious. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Protein Plus or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your spring. These are no fuss, no mess meals, no prepping, no cooking, no cleaning up. Simply heat up and savor the good stuff. They're tailored to your schedule. You can customize your meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Head to factormeals.com slash Dr. Nicole 50 and use code Dr. Nicole 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code Dr. Nicole 50 at factormeals.com slash Dr. Nicole 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Back in the day when my girls were born, it was not easy to share photos and videos with loved ones, but you have a fantastic option available, the Family Album app. The Family Album app was created in 2015 and has operated in the long term to give parents a secure and easy way to share photos and videos with loved ones. It's a totally secure personal haven for your family's memories. I love that there's no third party ads, no unwanted eyes. Now let's Let me share some of the great features that make the Family Album app a go-to app. First off, the app automatically sorts photos and videos by month, allowing you to swipe back in time and see how your child has grown. No more scrolling through endless feeds or searching through folders. Another cool feature about the Family Album app is you can order eight free photo prints every month to be delivered to your home. It's really nice to have some tangible pictures to hold onto or share to document each month of your baby's life. Plus, the Family Album app has unlimited storage and it is totally free. Yes, you heard that right. No more worrying about running out of space or being bombarded by ads when you're just trying to relive those heartwarming moments. So if you are still trying to use other messaging apps for your kids' photos, it is time to level up your family photo game with a free photo sharing app. Head over to the App Store today, search Family Album, it's all one word, download the app and start creating a legacy of love one photo at a time. Grief and joy can be simultaneous, plan for everything to go awry, and trust your instincts. These are all things that Andrea wanted to convey by sharing her birth story in this episode of the podcast. Welcome to the All About Pregnancy and Birth podcast. If you're having a baby in the hospital, you are giving birth in a system that too often takes away power from women over what happens in their own bodies. I'm Dr. Nicole Calloway Rankins, a practicing board certified OBGYN, who's had the privilege of helping well over a thousand babies into this world. I've been a doctor for over 20 years, and I'm here to help you take back your power, advocate for yourself, and have the beautiful pregnancy and birth that you deserve. This podcast is for educational purposes only, and it's not a substitute for medical advice. Check out the full disclaimer at drnicolerankins.com forward slash disclaimer. Now let's get to it. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. This is episode number 252. Whether this is your first time listening or you have been here before, I am so glad you're spending some time with me today. In this episode, we have Andrea. She is 36 years old and she gave birth to her first baby boy back in October. Shout out to fellow Libra babies. She was a teacher for almost 10 years, and now she's a project manager, and she works from home. She loves fitness and physical activity, along with listening to podcasts and spending time with her two pups. Andrea planned an induction at 39 weeks, but things did not go like she anticipated. She thought her water broke just after 38 weeks. It turned out that it didn't. 
but her blood pressure was high and her baby had turned to a transverse position, which is basically going across the uterus. And no matter how hard we try, a baby is not going to fit through the vagina that way. So she ended up having to have a C-section, which was appropriate in that case. However, things did not go great with her experience. And quite honestly, some of the things she experienced were just plain awful. Most of the nurses were great, but one in particular made her feel like she was failing as a mom. And then there were some other not ideal experiences at the hospital, like where she didn't see her baby for a solid 30 minutes after birth. And this resulted in bad postpartum depression and anxiety afterwards. Now, despite those challenges, she's also going to share how working with a postpartum coach and a pelvic floor physical therapist have helped her so much in grieving, not having the vaginal birth that she wanted. Really appreciate Andrea coming on to share her perspective. Now, although a birth plan is no guarantee that you will get the birth that you want, it will undoubtedly help set you up for success, especially if you approach making a birth plan the way that I teach you how to make a birth plan. And at the end of this month on April 30th, I am teaching my birth plan class live, make a birth plan the right way. And live is so much fun because we get to interact in real time, both with me, but also with other pregnant folks who are in the class. And I'll also be sharing something super special that you can only learn about if you register for the class. Registration will open April 15th for the live class on April 30th. The best way to know when registration opens is to join my email list. That's drnicolerankins.com forward slash email. And it's not just a great place to learn about the class. It's also a great place to get lovely pregnancy and birth information. I send a weekly email that has like great tips and information about pregnancy. If you're trying to do less social media, but still want to get great information from me about pregnancy and birth, this is a great way to do that. Little bite-sized nuggets that are really helpful. And it's just once a week. I never spam folks or anything like that. So sign up for my email list, drnicolerankins.com forward slash email and then you will be the first to know when registration opens for the live class on April 30th. All right, let's get into the birth story episode with Andrea. Thank you so much, Andrea, for agreeing to come onto the podcast. I am excited to have you share your birth story today. Hi, so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so why don't we start off by having you tell us a bit about yourself and your family. Sure. So my name is Andrea. Uh, I live in New Jersey. Um, I'm 36 years old. Uh, I was a teacher for about 10 years, and then I switched over recently over to uh, project management, so I get to work from home now, which okay. is uh, quite quite the blessing. Yeah. I'm married to my husband, Nick, and we just had a baby boy, Graham, uh, three months ago. All righty. So you're still pretty fresh postpartum. Yes, I yes. am very fresh <laughs> and still getting acclimated to this new life. Yeah, absolutely. So, and what did you teach when you were a teacher? I was K through six. Uh, so I, I taught uh, fourth grade, second grade, gifted and talented, uh, and I ended uh, in the STEAM lab. So okay. STEM. Yeah. I, everybody else in my family are educators. So oh. my mom taught, yeah, my mom taught math for like 50 years. My sister's a principal at an elementary school. My other sister was a principal. So I'm the oddball. A little so bit. you <laughs> <laughs> so you've heard all the stories. <laughs> I've heard all the stories, all yeah. the stories. All right. So in order to understand what happened with the birth, we have to understand what happened with the pregnancy. So why don't we start off by having you tell us a bit about what your pregnancy and prenatal care was like? Sure. Um, so it took us only four months, thankfully, to get pregnant. Um, I was a little bit worried since I was, you know, advanced maternal age that mm -hmm. it was going to take a long time. Thankfully, it did not. Um, I had regular care under a physician. I had looked up midwives in the area, but we kind of live in more of a rural area. So okay. the, the closest midwife that I had heard great reviews about was about an hour away. Uh, and so for me, I didn't really want to take that risk. God forbid something had happened. Sure. I want to be close to a hospital. So we went the, the regular route mm -hmm. for that. Okay. Uh, my prenatal care, I was very big into the apps. Um, okay. 
Oh, I downloaded about seven of them. Oh, what apps did you use? I'm curious. Uh, the apps I use, uh-huh. um, let's see. I did The Bump. Okay. Uh, Pregnancy Plus, What to Expect When You're Expecting. That one's really awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, and then Baby Center and Flow. Okay. Okay. And they just all like, do they send you like information based on your due date and like little daily or month or weekly things is well, that like each one was a little bit different which is why like i kind of like to use all of them uh-huh. um they would tell you what your baby looked like okay. you know that week i really loved it because it told you like how to eat nutritionally for the baby depending on like his development oh. uh, so i made sure that i was eating what i was supposed to be eating the suggestions that they had made uh during those times in my pregnancy just to hopefully have the best results Gotcha. Yeah. And kind of just seeing like what was being developed in the baby, you know, like his eyes and he can be able to, you know, open them soon and Uh things like that. Nice, nice, nice. nice. So you use the pregnancy apps. What else was your prenatal care like and pregnancy like? I worked out throughout most of it. I did uh, CrossFit up until about 33 weeks. Okay. Very, very modified, of course. Uh Uh, I couldn't really move too much. (laughs) <laughs> near the end there, but <laughs> I really tried to stay as active as I could uh-huh. just because I wanted to make sure that like myself and, and the baby was healthy. Sure. Sure. Prenatal vitamins from the beginning. Uh-huh. Uh, the apps were great for that too. I would supplement with iron uh-huh. as I got later into the trimesters right. and things like that. Magnesium for sleep because I had really bad insomnia. Mm. Um, but it was a a normal quote unquote pregnancy. Um, I had a lot of anxiety, you know, near the end just mm-hmm. because I guess this was my first one. Sure. And, you know, every time I went to the doctor, like my age was brought up or any report that I had, like, you know, it would say advanced maternal age. So I was just a little bit like, you know, is everything okay? Like, yeah. is everything going to be okay right. type thing? Right. Um, so I right. had a lot of anxiety around that. I actually got one of those at home ultrasound, uh-huh. uh, machines uh-huh. that uh, really, really helped me okay. just to kind of like make me feel better to like hear his heartbeat and things. So I really like that. Gotcha. Yeah. We, I think we create a lot of unnecessary anxiety around advanced maternal age. We like, especially for you, someone who was otherwise very healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a lot like in my head and just the things that you look up. I mean, you look up something and, um, you know, like the last, the, the worst thing possible shows mm-hmm. up and you're just kind of like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So how many, did you rotate between different doctors or was it just one doctor that you saw? Um, there were two doctors, two female doctors. It was really just whoever was on call at the, at the clinic. I kind of like to veer towards one just so that a guy could have the same person over and over so that I know mm-hmm who was going to be at the hospital with me sure. uh, for delivery. So I tried to make the appointments with just one. Okay. Um, so, and that, that worked out really well for me. Yeah. That, that's, that's an unusually small practice to just see, see two doctors together because that's a lot of call <laughs> to split between, um, between them. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. They had very specific hours and like, you know, certain days were their hospital days and, mm-hmm. and that. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. they were really wonderful. Okay. Okay. And you felt okay about your visits and things like that? They were fine. Um, from like your podcast and mm-hmm. like other podcasts that I had listened to, like I understood going in that I wasn't going to get an hour appointment. Mm-hmm. You know, like I knew that it was very conveyor belt like mm-hmm. and to have my questions ready to go if I had them. Yeah. Uh, kind of had to stop the doctor before they left the room mm-hmm. to ask the questions because, mm-hmm. you know, it's in and out. Yeah. So, and that's kind of why I like looked into the midwife experience because I had heard such wonderful things, sure. you know, and they really like sit there and take the time to get to know you and get right. to know your life and, right. and, you know, talk about how you're feeling, especially as, you know, a first time pregnancy, I, you know, I could read as much as I possibly could, but mm-hmm. still didn't know what to expect, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it kind of was what it was. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. Uh, conveyor belt is a good way to describe it. <laughs> Did you consider getting a doula at all? I had looked into getting a doula too. It was just kind of not in the budget. Mm-hmm. You know, I had I went to this one place uh, that was for moms and uh, did prenatal yoga and prenatal classes and things like that. And they had, you know, like a list of, of doulas, but it was it was really just something like I figured I would be okay this time and see how it went. And if I wanted to spend the money next time, you know, like maybe 
maybe look into it or save up at least. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, did you like the yoga? The yoga was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really love the yoga, especially near the end where I couldn't really move well anymore. Uh -huh. We used a lot of props, chairs mm -hmm. and things like that. And it was really wonderful because it was a community yeah. and all the women were pregnant okay. and at certain stages. Right. And, you know, sometimes pregnancy, at least in my experience, mm -hmm. it could be a little bit isolating, yeah. you know, and a little bit lonely at times. So to be in a place with everybody going through similar things. Sure want to talk that through and to laugh and like, oh, my ankles are so swollen it, right, you know, right. because they understand. Um, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I recommend it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you stay in contact with anybody from the class at all? Uh, so funny. So the class was an hour away uh -huh. and one of the girls there actually lives 15 minutes from me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, see? <laughs> so, yeah. So now I'm friends with her and, you know, I see all her pictures of her baby that she right, had. And, right. Yeah. So it was, it was cool to kind of see somebody, yeah. you know, lived close to me and now I can spend time with her. Yeah, that is nice. That is nice. Okay. So what did you do to prepare for your birth? I took every class, every podcast I, I listened to. Uh, I mean, the apps, I paid for things. I, I took free courses online mm -hmm. uh, I and mean, everything I could possibly think of to understand pregnancy and birth. Sure. I mean, sure. to kind of know, at least be some sort of prepared going into it. Mm -hmm. You know, like what does a vaginal birth entail? What does a C-section entail? Mm -hmm. What are the complications? What, you know, what induction can be like? Right. You know, I tried to verse myself in everything I possibly could okay. because I don't, I don't really have friends with kids. Right. I don't really have family right. that I'm close with, with kids. So uh -huh. it was really just me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So I tried to learn as much as I could. Okay. Okay. What other podcast did you listen to? Uh, besides yours, mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorites is actually called The Mint Project. Mm. And that's for um, pregnant athletes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So the the creators of the podcast are all athletic moms who um, are trying to promote a healthy lifestyle for moms and, um, during a pregnancy, but also postpartum. Right. Uh, especially because a lot of us can't find a pelvic floor therapist mm -hmm. or afford one. Uh, they have these programs that you can buy via your phone and they show you like breathing and exercises that you can do postpartum uh -huh. and uh, a community of, of postpartum women to kind of, you know, support each other and to kind of have a healthy uh, balance between life and fitness. And, okay. And nice. And nice. I never heard of that podcast. So that's a good one to hear. From. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was really great. A lot of the podcasts were around athletes who are also moms, you know, mm -hmm. so I could relate to that. And, you know, all the things that come with body changes and stuff like that is hard to cope with, especially when you're not able to do the things that you could do before either. Yeah. yeah you know, for your sure. Clothes don't fit and, you know, all the things. Yeah. So all of the changes that happen in the body. About 95% of pregnant women are not getting their recommended daily intake of key omega-3s. Enter Ritual. Their prenatal contains 350 milligrams of eco-friendly vegan omega-3 DHA in every serving. One of the things I like about Ritual prenatals is that they are rigorously tested and validated by a third party for allergens, microbes, and heavy metals. Ritual works with world-class certification bodies to validate their products. Their multivitamins are vegan, non-GMO project verified, gluten and major allergen free and certified B Corp. That means they're holding themselves accountable to not just their company's financial health, but also the health of people and our planet. Why settle for a multivitamin you're not 100% sure about? Ritual was literally built on trust, so you know it is the real deal. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com forward slash Dr. Nicole. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women Prenatal to your subscription today. That's ritual.com forward slash Dr. Nicole for 25% off. I had a, a, a plethora of symptoms uh, from pregnancy also that I was like trying to deal with. So it was uh, nice to kind of hear about all of that. Gotcha. Um, Got, I mean, what kind of symptoms did you have? I ran the gamut. So I, 
I mean, first trimester, I had the normal, like I was very tired, mm -hmm. um, very nauseous. I had food aversions um, to the point where I would be craving something. I would cook it. And by the time it was done, I didn't want it anymore. And so our refrigerator was packed with leftovers. Right, right. But into the second trimester, my ankles got very, very swollen that mm. the doctors always made sure like nothing else was swollen every right. time I went. Right. Um, I'd buy new sneakers, you know, it was just very hard to manage. But yeah. I also I also got very severe carpal tunnel <sighs> in both of my hands. Mm. I had to dangle my hands off the bed so that like it would the pain would go away, but right. it was so painful that I would wake up in the middle of the night. Oh. Not to mention I had pregnancy insomnia on top of that. <laughs> oh. So um so I'm actually still kind of dealing with it. It's been three months and now I have the I don't know how to pronounce it, the de de Quervain's tenos and tenos. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I have that in both of my my wrists from okay. the carpal tunnel. And the doctor said that that won't really go away until breastfeeding is done completely. Wow. So so I have that. I had very bad jaw pain uh, in my last trimester. Uh. Yes, chewing was very painful. Uh, that went away immediately after I gave birth. Uh, hyperpigmentation on mm -hmm. my skin. And then um, I developed some skin tags in places, which was weird to notice on myself. Of course, the stretch marks. And then I got uh, gestational gingivitis also. Oh, God. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you had a lot. I had, yeah. I had a lot. I wouldn't say it was the most pleasant uh, yeah. experience. Yeah. Uh, besides yeah. the bump and the kicks, I don't know if, uh, you know, I recommend my experience to too yeah. many people. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, like, the response you probably got over and over was, it's you just have to wait until pregnancy for it to yeah. end. Yeah. It's normal. Uh -huh. It's normal. You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, that, unfortunately, that's a side effect. You know, mm -hmm. it'll, exactly, it'll go away, mm -hmm. you know, after the baby comes, mm -hmm. just tough it out. Type, yeah. type of. Yeah. I actually had gotten really, really bad poison ivy in my first trimester because mm. I was gardening okay. and I couldn't take a thing for that either. Right. Oh right. So that was yeah. another just, just tough it out. Just, type yeah. thing. I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, gosh, um, gosh. And I actually had to take uh, the sugar test, the glucose test twice. Okay. So you had to drink the nasty drink twice. I had to the first time I passed it. Oh. And then the second time you had to do I the did it and okay. I had to take the sugar drink the uh -huh. third, the second time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's, right. it was a fun experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, getting back to the, th well, I just want to say, isn't it crazy like the things that change in your body? related to pregnancy that you would think like, why are my gums now certainly sensitive or why do I have carpal tunnel? I, I think we just don't understand so much about the physiology and the body and what happens. Like a lot of it, like I didn't know was, was a thing, mm -hmm. you know, like you hear about the nausea, you hear about the fatigue, you mm -hmm. know, the stretch marks, you know, the weight gain and all, the, all, all of that. But then I was just you know, things were happening to me and I was really like looking up, like, is mm -hmm. this normal? Right. And it's like, yeah, that's normal too. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 It's pretty crazy. Uh, so getting back to like your preparation, were there any particular reasons? Oh, you said some other podcasts. I think you were, you were to have to tell me some oh, other podcasts. Yeah. Um, so it was yours, the mint project, uh, -huh. uh, 40 weeks is just this cute one that like tells you the development of the baby every week, uh -huh. what to expect when you're expecting evidence-based birth. Mm-hmm. Strong Mama, and then Mommy Labor Nurse. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay. Now, were there any particular resources that you, or or classes or books or anything that you liked better than others? Um, well, I, I really liked your birth plan course. Oh. Um, that I really liked, and I, yes, yeah, so I, I followed that to a T for my birth plan. And I, I did, yeah, I didn't pay her to say that, yeah. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was really good. And then um, this company, Aeropump, uh -huh. uh, they actually have a ton of, courses on from breastfeeding to yeah. taking care of the baby to all these things that are covered by insurance. Nice. I was able to take like free, uh, six free courses and okay. they were like an hour long uh -huh. and in a community of pregnant women. Right. So, and just like everybody was asking questions and right. that, those were really wonderful. You said Aeropump? Aeropump. Yeah. Okay. I need yeah, to they have a bunch of uh, courses um, by professionals and you just log on and ask your questions and they answer all your questions. Nice. Nice. So you did a lot of research to find things that were like readily available. 
Yeah. And things that you didn't have to pay money for, Mm -hmm. you know, like Mm -hmm. I, I initially paid for like a course through the hospital that was like $75 in my first trimester to be ready by the time I had the baby. Mm -hmm. And by the time that course came, I was like, I've had so many other courses for free. Like I hadn't paid for that one, you know? Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. But but yeah, like I tried again, like I tried to not pay for too many things and trying to find the free ones. (laughs) Yeah. Gotcha. I love it. Love it. Love it. So what are some things that you wanted for your birth? So I was aiming for a vaginal birth, of course. I have a high pain tolerance, so I was playing with the notion of not having a medicated birth. Okay. I kind of went into it thinking like open mind, right? Like, so I'm going to try to have one not medicated, but if things, you know, go awry, like I'm okay with Mm -hmm. having, you know, the epidural. Sure. So that was, that was my goal. Um, I really didn't want a C-section of course, as, as most women, you know, don't, but I, I had in my head that it was a possibility because, uh, the first couple ultrasounds, he was actually transverse. Okay. And so, you know, very early on, they, Mm -hmm. they told me that if he doesn't turn by this certain point, you're going to have to have a C-section. So that was in my head. Um, so I was, prepared for that, even though like that was really something that I didn't want. I mean, you know, I've, I've heard that it's a a harder recovery and also because I was an athlete, you know, like that didn't really sit well with me either because of everything that goes along with that. Yeah. Um, But, but yeah, so just, just, just a, just a natural birth with limited amount of pain medication if possible. Gotcha. Gotcha. (laughs) All right. And was there anything in particular, you said you didn't want to have a C-section. Was there anything that you were afraid of? I don't think I was afraid of anything. I think because I really did my homework and I did everything that I possibly could to Mm -hmm. make sure that I was healthy and that Mm -hmm. like I was ready Mm -hmm. and it was kind of up to the universe, you know, to kind of whatever happened. Um, so I was, I was, I was prepared or so I thought I was prepared until, (laughs) until it actually happened. And then like, I, you know, that was a little bit harder. (laughs) Okay. Well, let's talk about it. What, what happened? Tell us about your labor and birth. How did things start? How did things go? So our little munchkin at our ultrasound at 37 weeks, he was measuring at 9.8 pounds. So not little munchkin then. So not (laughs) munchkin. I call him a little chunker. So the plan was to induce at 39 weeks okay, uh, and try to have a natural delivery and, mm-hmm. and see what happened. Sure. So, so that was the plan. We had everything all set. We were going to go to this hospital that's about 45 minutes away that had like rave reviews um, for the labor and delivery department. So okay. I was looking forward to that. Right. And then we were all set and ready to go. Like uh-huh. babies were ready. Uh-huh. You know, so I think in my head, I was prepared for that. Right. And so that's not what happened. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what happened? So I was 38 uh, and three uh-huh. and I took myself out to breakfast that day. My husband was working. So I took right. myself out to breakfast that day. I went to the store to buy, you know, some things for the house, mm-hmm. you know, preparing because I'm having a baby sure. in like a week or so. Right, right. And I'm walking through the aisles and I feel like a trickle, trickle, trickle. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, that was a little weird. Let me, I, I, let me just keep walking and see if it happens again. Right. And you know, I walk, walk, walk and trickle, trickle, tr- trickle. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm 38 weeks. It's very possible that my water just broke. Right. So I put my stuff away. I don't buy anything. Right. <laughs> I get to my car and I drive next door to the convenience store to use the bathroom. Right. And everything's soaked. So then, then like the panic sets in and like the nerves set in and the anxiety sets in. Like I start to get scared. I'm like, okay, like this is real. Right. Right. <laughs> so I walk back into my car and my car seat's wet. So like there's no doubt in my mind it, that my water is broken. Sure. Yeah. And I have to go to the hospital. Right. And it was funny because that morning I had a feeling for whatever reason, I took all of my hospital bags and brought them downstairs. Okay. I don't know why. See, something was, something was telling you. So they were right by the front door. Okay. Um, so I get in my car and I start driving to the hospital that's closer to us because okay. I wasn't sure if I was making it 45 minutes. And I was also, um, 
uh, Hep B positive at that point. Okay. And I know that when your water breaks, you have to get like the anti antibiotics in Got quicker. It. Oh, you mean GB- GBS positive? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You yes. said Hep B, Did which is hepatitis. One? Yeah. You said hepatitis. That's not right. <laughs> no, that one. Yeah. That's, that's not the right one to get wrong. So I was, I had that. So I had to get the antibiotics sure. as soon as your water broke. So uh-huh. I read. So I think I was panicking because of that. Mm-hmm. So I call the doctor. Right. Um, I'm driving to the hospital that's closer to us. And she was like, I'm on call at the other hospital. Like, I'm just not going to be able to make it. So my doctor can't come. <laughs> like, oh, great. So I drive myself to the hospital. I'm crying, I think, because I'm all the things, right? right. Like, it's early. Right. My doctor's not going to be there. I'm right. by myself at this point. I'm driving myself to the hospital. Oh, okay. So did, she, did your doctor tell you, like, maybe try and drive to the other hospital or was she like, I don't think she said, no, she was like, maybe I could make it. Let me see or something like that. She's like, but, but I'm probably not going to be able to be. Okay. I mean, did she tell you that you could drive to where she, where she was or was she just like, no, I don't think she said that. I don't know if, I mean, maybe that was offered. I can't quite remember. Right. Okay. But there was no way I was doing that anyway. I was just too nervous. It was, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I wasn't, um, cause I wasn't sure what was happening. So, okay. 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 And then did you call your husband? Like where was he during this? So I didn't call, I didn't even call my husband. So <laughs> I, I was like panicking. So like I drove to the hospital, I park, I waddle my way into the hospital and I was like, I think my water just broke. So they bring me upstairs and this is when like, I realized like I should have driven to the other hospital. I get there and like, I'm at the front desk and I'm crying, you know? And I was like, hi, my water just broke. You know, I I think I'm in labor. And she looks at me and she's like, why are you crying? (laughs) And I was like, cause my water just broke and I'm really scared and I'm really nervous. It's my first baby, you know, she was looking at me like, and then she was like, well, we wish you would have called us. (laughs) I was like, um, well, I drove here as soon as I thought my water broke. So as fast as I could get, you know, like this right. was time to call you to tell you I was coming. Like I'm on my way. I'm 10 minutes away, right. you know? And I guess the doctor didn't have time, didn't get to call also to let them know at that point. So the, she was already like a little bit annoyed that I was there, which, you know, didn't make me feel very good with like sure. everything that was going on. Was this just like the front desk person or was this the doctor that was there? She was a labor and delivery nurse, nurse. but okay. she had the front desk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I was also nervous because she was so like laid back that I was, what was it? G, G H G B S G B S uh-huh. positive. Uh-huh. Yeah. That I was like, I need antibiotics, you know, like that type of thing. She was right. like, okay, we're going to put you in a room. We're going to take a, a, a test to make sure that it was amniotic fluid and nothing else, you know, so just sit down. And it took about, I don't know, I want to say like 20 minutes for someone to come in and like take the test. Mm-hmm. And, um, it turns out my water did not break. And I looked at her and I was like, what are you talking about? My, like my pants were soaked. My car seat was soaked. And she was like, it was either fluid or some kind of incontinence, but it wasn't your water breaking. And I was like, I've had, I like, I didn't have that problem throughout my entire pregnancy and I don't have it now after pregnancy. Right. So I was almost in disbelief that it hadn't broken. Right. Um, but apparently it didn't, but they would, had taken my blood pressure at that point and it was very, very high. Uh, probably cause you were nervous. I'm guessing. That's what I, that's what I thought in my mm-hmm. head. Like I was just, everything was very elevated mm-hmm. and like my blood pressure is usually very good. Right. And so it was very high. And I think at this point I called my husband, <laughs> were you on your way or getting there? So I kind of just let him know, like, hey, I think my water broke. You should probably get here. The nurse was like, take your time. Like, it's not happening anytime soon, even if, because I wasn't dilated at all. Right. And so, yeah, so my water had not broken. Uh, My blood pressure was very, very high. And that's when the doctor came in and he said he was, like, very concerned that my blood pressure was very high. You know, they said I'm 38 weeks already. And so they came in with, like, a portable ultrasound machine. And... What I failed to mention before is like the last two ultrasounds that we had, our little chunker was head down. Okay. So we were like ready to go. Right. We're going to have a vaginal birth or at least we're going to try. 
high. Right. And that's where like my head was at. Right. And he did the ultrasound and that little stinker was sideways again. Okay. So that's when I looked at the doctor and I was like, that means I have to have a C-section, right? And he looked at me and he was like, yep. <laughs> I was like, okay, like, here we go. So, okay. so that's when it kind of started to like sink into me that it was nothing like I was wanting it to be. Right. 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 I think I took that very hard. Like I was very emotional over it and very sad. And on top of that, I had had a big breakfast. And so I had to wait six hours before they could perform the C-section. Right. Um, So I'm just sitting there trying to let this all sink in um, that I'm having a C-section. I'm not having a natural birth. And I think I really, really, really wanted it to be natural. Right. So I was, I was pretty sad over it. Sure. And you know, so it was, it was time, you know, so I walked with my husband down the hallway and like, what really got me was the girl across the hall. Like I heard the nurses say, push, 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 push. Mm. And like, that's when like, I, I like broke down, like really crying. Cause okay. it was just like, I looked at my husband and I was like, this is not, this is not how I wanted this to go, sure. you know? Sure. So that was really that was really tough on me, and I didn't realize how hard it was going to be on me until right. it was actually happening. Right. And then I think I like I just like left my body because the rest, the rest of it, I remember kind of like I was like looking at it from an outsider's point of view. Right. Kind of like it was like a movie, you know, yeah. like it was the bright lights and everything was just so, you know, it's so medical and so mm-hmm. I don't I don't I don't know what the word is, but it's not yeah. like. You know, it's not natural and, you know, beautiful and, you know, all the things that you wanted it to be. Sure. And, you know, I wanted to feel what a contraction felt like. Right. Even though most women say, no, you don't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wanted that for myself. Sure. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Diaper rash can be one of the worst experiences your little one has to go through, and keeping their delicate skin happy and healthy shouldn't require a spatula to apply thick, goopy treatments that can be just as irritating and uncomfortable as the diaper rash. Instead, try Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is a pediatrician-approved skin protectant, free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It was developed by a mom who is also a doctor when she couldn't find any traditional products that worked for her baby's persistent diaper rash. Use just a small amount of Dr. Mom Butt Balm to help soothe your baby's skin and feel good about making the right choice. Nothing comes between you and your baby, not even diaper rash. Check out Dr. Mom Butt Balm, available on Amazon or Walmart.com. The C-section went routine. I will say, you know, it went really well. Uh, the the amnia, the anesthesiologist uh-huh. was really wonderful. Okay. She was wonderful. Mm-hmm. She talked me through the whole thing because I was very nervous. Right. You know, m- my husband was was there, and he was. I think he was a little bit nervous too. Um, but yeah, I I remember just laying there, and I I said to them, I was like, I'm not going to be able to feel this, right? Can you check that I'm not going to be able to feel this? And she was just like, We're going to do the test to make sure that you can't feel it. Uh-huh. Okay, you can that test. Right, right. Um, I had asked for a clear curtain, uh-huh. uh, so that I could see what was going on, or uh-huh. as much as I could. Sure. Um, so they had the clear curtain with like the the paper over uh-huh. it. Yeah, we could bring it on at like a yeah. certain time. Yeah. Um, I didn't feel a thing, which was great. Yeah. And I just felt like a lot of, you know, like as they describe, like awkward, like pushing and tugging, like a lot of like my body shaking type thing. And finally he was, he was out and I heard a cry and I was like, is that him crying? Cause that's like, I've heard like, that's the thing that tells you he's okay. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, he's crying. And the doctor says, oh, he's not too big. Oh yes, he is. This is a baby Saurus Rex in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, they said he was going to be 9.8 pounds and they weighed him and he was exactly 9.8 pounds. Okay. Okay. Like usually it's, you know, like right. usually they're like, oh, it's a pound or right. two off. Right. Direction. Right. Exactly 9.8 pounds. And everyone in the operating room was like, are you serious? Right. That never happens, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So the baby Saurus Rex was born 9.8 pounds. 
Did they bring him over to you while you were still? No. So, so my birth plan, you know, of course went a little awry, but mm-hmm. I had had a birth plan. Like if I have a C-section, please do all of these things. I, I was so out of it that I, I don't think they did any of it. Mm. Um, I delayed cord clamping. Mm-hmm. I don't think they did that. I wanted the golden, you know, like skin to skin, which they couldn't do. What they did was they wrapped him up, they weighed him, they checked him, and then they brought him over and I could like look at him. Okay. Okay. So was your husband holding him or? Uh, for part of it. Yeah. The okay. nurse was um, holding him in between us uh-huh. so that I could see. And then he was able to hold the baby. Okay. Okay. And then I hadn't, and then, you know, they took him and the baby out of the room and then they had to sew me up and everything. Um, but then I didn't see the baby for like a good 30, 45 minutes. And I was like, uh, Wait, what? Yeah. Like I was like, where to the point where I was like, where is my baby? Like, can I, can I see my baby soon? I mean, wait, was this while you were still in the OR or was this when you were out of the OR? I was out of the OR. I was like in the hospital bed and I was just like, where is he? Like, I don't even know like what they were doing for so long. Like they took his Length, feet measurement. Yeah, I, I don't oh, know. Wait, I don't sorry, know why it took that wait, long. What? What was? Yeah. Uh, what? It was very I don't understand okay. that. <laughs> I was like, that did go. <laughs> what did they say? Uh, nothing. They were just like, oh, they're doing this, that, and the other thing. He'll be in soon, and then like soon was like ten minutes even after that, and I was like, where's my blank? Bl- I mean, as as I say adult language to my children, where's my baby? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I just. It's like, can I please have, you know, because all yeah. I'm doing right now is like, you know, it's just like me in this state of like emotion and I have nothing to show for it right now. Like, where is he? You know, so that was a little weird. Um, well, where was your husband? Was he with you or he was with him where okay. he was? Right. Yeah. So right. I, I guess they were doing all the things and they were taking longer than usual. I don't know. Um, but then they finally like rolled him in, you know, and I was able to. Um, you know, hold him, of course, and and I had to feed him and learn how to do all of all of that. That so that was like my next thing that like I didn't have a good ex- experience, and I think this was kind of like the turning point that like kind of like sent me into like a spiral a mm. little bit. So, um, I was told that I was nursing him fine, right? They mm-hmm. were the, watching. I mean, it was very painful. And the nurse had said, you know, um, if your toes are curling, you're doing it right. And I was like, okay, well, that's that's what's happening because I, I'm in a, a considerable amount of pain, like, while he's nursing. You know, like, I, like, this is, like, unbearable, you know. Um, so I thought that I was doing it right and that he was getting the colostrum and, like, what he needed. I'm on 48 hours of no sleep at this point. So I am beyond exhausted. And the, you know, the anesthesia is wearing off, <laughs> you know, right. and all the things. And so, you know, they bring him in every two to three hours um, to feed. I wanted him to stay in my room most of the time, but I was so tired sure. that like every once in a while, like they would take him out into the nursery and like right. let me sleep for a little bit. Right. So I thought I was doing a great job, right. like nursing, like I'm getting this mom thing and this breastfeeding thing down, you know, and so they wheel him in one time and I'm so tired and he keeps falling asleep while I'm trying to nurse him. So I'm like trying to give him the breast, you know, I'm like trying to squeeze colostrum into his mouth because he's not taking any, you know, and I was like, okay, I just need to like rest for one minute. So the nurse comes in and she's like, how long did you breastfeed for? And I was like, oh, like about five minutes or so right now I'm going to try again. And she got very stern with me and she said, well, you know, I just want to let you know that he's turning very yellow. And, you know, if you're not going to give him enough breast milk, then we're going to have to start supplementing with formula. Uh, we don't want to have to put him under the lights. So you need to try a little bit harder. And also he is 9%, lost 9% of his body weight. She's like, it's not a huge deal yet, but you need to breastfeed longer and you need to like make this a priority because if he loses 10%, then that's a big deal. I swear to God, if I could find her, I would slap her right now. So I'm just getting like all this information. I think I'm doing a good job breastfeeding. And now she's telling me that I'm not doing a good job breastfeeding and that he's turning yellow and he's losing too much weight because I'm not feeding my baby. And so that's when I started to kind of internalize like, 
I'm already failing. Like I'm already failing at this. Like, uh, you know, so like I'm hurt. I'm upset that like I'm not feeding my baby. He's losing weight. He's all these things. And so I think that's like the straw that broke my camel's back, the camel's back. And like, I just mentally took a turn for the worst. (laughs) Um, And I was just like a mess after that. Plus the fact that I was healing from the C-section. Sure. And I mean, like I, like I said, like I have a high pain tolerance, you know, they made you get up the very next day. It was the most painful thing I'd ever experienced. Like Mm. I blacked out the pain. Oh and I got dizzy God. and the nurse had to like stabilize me. Right. So that and breastfeeding and taking care of a newborn and not being able – like being on like zero sleep for days at this time and then being told that I'm not doing this right. <laughs> um, it wasn't a good experience. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> and I probably, yeah. you know, if – unless something like – happened next time I had a child like I'm going to the next hospital the other hospital you know um because she she just really like she kind of just like did me in right right and so like I made sure that like I would try to nurse him for 20 25 30 minutes at a time like you know to like appease her really and to like make sure that like I'm doing my job as a mom I was in the hospital for five days and I mean like I could already feel like the depression like Mm. starting you know like people would come in all happy and like congratulations and I'd start you know like I I was very you know emotional and the nurse was just like oh you're just very weepy you'll be fine when you go home and I was like okay I guess I guess that's true like I don't know maybe I'm just a little weepy like that so let's go home and like see how this, you know, works. So we brought him home and we had a doctor's appointment the very next day uh-huh. and he had lost more weight. So he was 9.8. By the time we got to the doctor, he was six days old. He was eight and a half pounds. Okay. So he was losing more and more weight. So immediately, I mean, like I'm sitting there like looking at the doctor, just like crying, 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 because at this point, like I'm just like beside myself. Right. Like I just, I don't even know where the emotions are coming from, yeah. you know? And so we had to supplement with formula right away because he was losing too much weight. Um, I have in my head that I'm not breastfeeding correctly, you know? So did you see a lactation consultant at any point during this? Was there one at the hospital? So the lactation consultant at the hospital, she was, I hate to, she was terrible. Mm. I mean, she came in for, Maybe five or ten minutes. Right. And, you know, like I had I had seen videos on like how to put the breast in the mouth mm-hmm. and like for like suckling and, and, and things like that. And I tried it a bunch of times and she was just like, No, that's not right. No, try it try it this way. Okay, you wanna check his cheeks? No, that's not right. No, that's right. Can you help her? And she left. Like to one of the nurses. Oh, uh- Okay. And so that was and that was my experience with the woman in the hospital. Right. We had hired a lactation consultant to come in, I think like the seventh day uh-huh. when we got home. Uh-huh. Uh, she was very wonderful and she was very um professional and knowledgeable. But they all have different I mean, she was saying that I had to nurse like 45 minutes on each side, uh, you know, until it was until I was empty. I had to lay on my back. Um, don't use the boppies. They're crap. You know, like just like all these things. Okay. It was just very, very overwhelming. Sure. To me. Sure. Um, sure. So I decided in the end that we were going to supplement with the formula uh-huh. and I was going to pump. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's what we ended up doing. And he, I mean, that's, and that's exactly what he need. Like he gained weight real fast. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, by the time we got back, it did take some time for him to get back to birth weight, though. I think it took maybe four weeks, Mm -hmm. three, four weeks for him to get back to the nine and a half pounds. Okay. But I I definitely had at that point like postpartum depression. Like I was in a spot where like I I couldn't even tell you like what happened that week. Mm. You know, it was just like I I didn't want to hold the baby. Right. In my head, I was like, I've been through so much right now that mm-hmm. like I don't I don't not that I don't love him, not right. that he's not wonderful, but like right. I don't want to put in any more work right now. Right. You know, like this right. is all too much for me. I need somebody else to care for him because I need I I, I need like time for myself. Sure. 
Sure. But it was just like sure. uncontrollable, like hysterical crying every day and like just like going upstairs and, and laying in bed. Um, so that was really hard. And, you know, a lot of like that around the pain was really bad. They didn't tell us how much like Motrin and Tylenol to take. And so my, uh, my mother was here and she was trying to be like conservative with the amount. Mm -hmm. And so I was just in so much pain because I was being under medicated. Mm. Once we got that sorted out, I felt a little bit better physically, but like mentally I was just like not okay. So I immediately started reaching out to um, people on Instagram. I actually messaged the Mint Project and they gave me a postpartum coach. Um, so I reached out to her immediately and started talking to her. I'm still in therapy with her once a week. Okay. Uh, she's wonderful. I'm in regular therapy once a week also. Um, I was able to access uh, a mom group. It was like $25 virtually for an hour with moms that were in like the postpartum phase. Uh -huh. and it was really just a group of mom just saying like how we feel sure. and like what's going on. Right. And it was so nice to hear that so many women are going through this right. in the exact same way. Right. Right. You know, like right. it was like music to my ears because they were saying like all the things that I was feeling, all mm -hmm. the things that I was going through. Right. And I was very open with my experience. And, you know, whenever anybody reached out and asked how I was, like I was very honest. Sure. And I was like, you know, not great. I right. mean, the baby's healthy right. and he's doing wonderfully. I'm not so much, you know, I have a lot of PPD right now and just a lot of things going on. And 90% of the women I said that to said they were going through, they had gone through the same thing, mm. but they just never told anybody. Sure. Or they sure. just never reached out for help. Or I wish I had reached out for help sooner because it was so, so hard for me. Right. Right. And nobody ever talks about this. Yeah. You know, like I thought something was wrong with me. I thought that there was something going on with me that like nobody experienced. Right. When in actuality, like most women have gone through this. Oh my goodness. Well, do you, did your, was your OBGYN, like when did you see, like go back to your OBGYN and were they helpful at all? I had called her probably the second week mm -hmm. postpartum because, because I was not doing well. Mm -hmm. um, and she had me come in and she, she was very wonderful. Her and one of the nurses who I had become very close with. She took the time and it was the different doctor, not the one that was like supposed to come to the hospital. It was the other one. Mm -hmm. She took the time. She sat down and she just said, tell me what's going on. Okay. And she, she, she was with me for like a good 20, 30 minutes, just talking to me, talking me through things, right. what to expect, you right. know? And at the end, you know, she, she did prescribe um, something to help me, uh -huh. um, which I, I will say like really, really did help. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. And then she called like a couple days later to check in on me to okay. see how I was doing, right. you know, so I had to reach out for the help, mm -hmm. but they were there for me once I did. Okay. You know, okay. Okay. Um, opposed to like the hospital though, like they gave me like some pamphlets on postpartum depression uh -huh. and I had called the number on the pamphlet and the woman who answered the phone just gave me a bunch of other numbers to call. Right. And I was kind of just like, this isn't working for me. Like what, right. if, what if I was like really, you know, in yeah. trouble yeah. and really it took me like all this effort to call yeah. this number. Right. And then you're just giving me a bunch of numbers to call. Right. Like that's, you know, that's not like a way to do things when yeah, somebody's right. in. They could have just put all those other numbers in the <laughs> pamphlet if that's what's yeah, going to be. Exactly. Right. <laughs> So, so my therapists have been really wonderful with, with the prescription has been really good. It took about seven or eight weeks for the fog to finally kind of lift for me okay. and for me to kind of feel somewhat normal mm -hmm. again. Thankfully, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm right. still processing with my postpartum coach, you know, like the birth. Um, I think for me, it was very traumatic, especially because of the participants in it mm -hmm. um, who made me feel a certain way. Right. Um, so, you know, still working through that and getting used to this new person, you know, that I birthed and this new person who I, that I am, yeah. you know, it's 
it's a lot to take in. Absolutely. Um, I did get, uh, find a, a pelvic floor therapist. Okay. Um, thankfully, she was wonderful. I had He was very low the whole time. And I remember laying on the table and she was like, girl, I can fit six fingers in between your abs. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> How many? What are you talking about? <laughs> She's like, yeah, I could feel, I'm not going to push really hard. She's like, but I could put my fingers like in you, like, and probably feel yeah. your spine. And I'm like, well, that's not good. Okay. She's like, no, no, it's not good, but we're going to work, right. you know, work to get that back. Right, right, <laughs> right. She was wonderful too. Finally, I'd say I'm, I'm almost three and a half weeks postpartum and like my abs are almost completely back together. Okay. Okay. Thankfully, okay. it showed me a lot of exercises and breathing activities and stuff, right. which was great. Right. The only downside is that none of this is covered by insurance. Of course not. You know, because so we don't value women in America. So. Yeah, the lactation <laughs> consultant was three hundred dollars for the hour. Mm-hmm. The postpartum, uh, the pelvic for an hour for an hour. Um, the okay. pelvic floor therapist was three fifty for the hour. She was wonderful, but right. I can't do that every week. <laughs> you know, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, you know, right. I mean, they were great and I would do it again, but yeah. man, it really hits you hard financially too. For sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, as we wrap up then, what I just, I mean, there's so many things I'm thinking in my head, my gosh. Um, what is your one thing or favorite piece of advice that you would give to someone who's getting ready for their birth or about to have a baby? Um, my number one piece of advice would be that there is there is space for both joy and grief in this process mm. and that they can live simultaneously within you and and what's going on in your life and that's okay. Mm. You know, it's it's a beautiful thing to bring, you know, your baby into the world and to see that face for the first time and all those things, but it's also okay to be sad and to grieve other things that you've lost. Absolutely. Everything's new and to give yourself grace because everybody's just learning. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's okay. And what you're feeling is valid. And if you're feeling a certain way, know that you're not alone and that there's help out there and to not be afraid to, to reach out because you might be surprised with how many people are going through the same exact thing. Mm. Mm. Well, speaking of reaching out, where can women connect with you? You can say nowhere if you don't want, you know, if you're not on social media or anything. Um, I just Instagram. It's at Dre Marie 87, D-R-E-M-A-R-I-E 87. Uh, Okay. Just a normal person with an Instagram account. But um, if they need any of those resources, Mm -hmm. I'm happy to share them. A lot of them are virtual. So feel free to reach out to me and I'm, I'm happy to pass along their information. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to come on and tell your story. That was very powerful. I can imagine a bit difficult also, but I, I know it's going to help somebody to that, that you were so open and honest about your experience. Absolutely. Yes. And I'm happy, happy to be here and happy to share that. And, um, you know, I wish all you mamas out there a lot of luck and do what you think is right and trust your instincts yeah, and your I, intuition. I love it. I love it. Wow, what a birth story episode that was. I so appreciate Andrea coming on to share her story. And you know, after every episode, when I have a guest on, I do something called Dr. Nicole's Notes, where I talk about my top takeaways from the conversation. Here are my Dr. Nicole's Notes from my conversation with Andrea. One, conveyor belt is unfortunately a good way to describe prenatal care in the traditional U.S. system. It really is like short appointments. There are about five minutes each, maybe 10 minutes. There's just not a lot of interaction. These days, you may not even see the same doctor from visit to visit. Some practices want you to meet all of the doctors, which means you may meet a different person every single visit. So that's just the reality of how prenatal care is right now. You'll get a different experience with midwives, but even midwives are being pressured to provide that more like short visits, prenatal care. 
within our system. And I say all that to say that you're going to have to look for other sources of information outside of your prenatal visits, like this podcast, of course, like my birth plan class, of course, it's coming up live at the end of the month. But unfortunately, the reality is that conveyor belt does describe how prenatal care is delivered in the United States. Number two, no judgment, no judgment at all. But in Andrea's case, her panicking about whether or not her water broke led to a series of unfortunate events where she went to the hospital where she wasn't intending to go and then her blood pressure was higher. So she ended up having to stay. So when anything happens in your pregnancy, I want you to pause for a moment and just take a deep breath. Pause and take a deep breath breath. There are very few things that are true, true emergencies in pregnancy. I would say like heavy, profuse bleeding is definitely a true emergency. You need to get to the hospital, whatever hospital, as, as quickly as possible. But when your water breaks, as long as the fluid is clear, as long as you're feeling the baby move, then generally it's not an emergency. I tell folks, if those things are the case, you may not even have to come to the hospital for six hours or sometimes even longer, all right? So if your water breaks, take a deep breath. It doesn't mean that you have to rush to the hospital. And then when anything happens, just take a deep breath and gather yourself, center yourself before you proceed. Now, a great way to help work on that skill of pausing and taking a deep breath. And by the way, this is a skill that applies to life, right? When things come up in our lives, lives that throw us out of whack or they come out of different areas, just pausing and taking a deep breath can be so instrumental in helping you tackle that. A great way to flex, or I should say, develop that muscle of taking a deep breath is meditation. Just 10 minutes, a few minutes a day can really help you develop that skill of pausing so that when things come your way, you can handle them from a place of calm and not from a place of panic. Okay. Last thing I want to say is that there is no reason a baby should not be with their mother as soon as possible right after birth. If your baby is healthy and doesn't have any issues, to not see your baby for 30 to 45 minutes is just insane, ridiculous, completely unnecessary, and just uh, awful. Really, it's just awful. Babies need to be with their mothers. And yes, her husband could see the baby and was with the baby, but that ain't the same, okay? Like you are the one who grew that baby. You want to see your baby too. Most of the things that that need to be done for a baby can be done right in the room with the baby. For us, we have a policy where the nursery nurse comes to assess the baby. This is whether it's a vaginal birth or in the OR at 30 minutes after birth. They do some vital signs, make sure the baby looks okay. That can be done with mom, with the baby on mom's chest, okay? Like all of these things can be done in the room with mom and baby together. And then they come back again at an hour and that's where they weigh the baby and then offer vitamin K, hepatitis vaccine, things like that. But you really should be with your baby to be separated from a healthy baby that's normal. for 30 or 45 minutes is just really insane and completely unacceptable. All right. So there you have it. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and please leave me a review in Apple podcast. I do shout outs from those reviews and those reviews help the show to grow. Also be sure to hop onto my email list, drnicolerankins.com forward slash email. So you can be the first to know when registration opens for my live birth plan class that is happening at the end of the month on April 30th. So that's it for this episode. Do come on back next week and remember that you deserve a beautiful pregnancy and birth. (laughs) 